Yes, we made it. Wow, so many of you made it tonight. How are you tonight? We'll just find a clicker here because clicker, clickers are important. It's right here. So the light after the tunnel. So I was kind of prepared to make this like a half a lecture, half like a workshop. So there's going to be interaction. So I'm going to ask you some questions. And please don't be shy. Let's share. I'll share my personal story with you, which is, has to do with the life after the tunnel. So when you hear the light after the tunnel, the light after the tunnel, what, you, what comes to mind? What do you think about? Uh, you finally see an exit or see a destination. You see hope. Very good. Yeah, there, is no, there is no answer that's wrong. So it's good. It's just about sharing. So. That's that's very good. That's hope. Oh, what else? There is it's a lot of stuff in your mind. Feel free to share. So let's ask questions, right? Because one way that another another very common it's about death, right? So you hear that you know there is the light, you know, there's near death experience. People see there is like a light. There's a tunnel. I don't know if you've seen those documentaries. I lived through it. I had a cardiac arrest and I was in coma seven, eight months ago and I actually was in the other side. And I been through the tunnel. It was not this pretty. It was very dark. But I managed to find the light after the tunnel. And let's, let's ask about death, right? Is death the end? Is there a light after the tunnel? Are you sure? What do you think? Just raise your hands. Do you think that death, death is the end? All right, so I guess everybody here in the spiritual center, I think you're kind of prepared to be a little more spiritual. So usually we have, most of us, we have like a, a Christian belief and we have this already. We, we grew up with this hope that there is an afterlife, you know, we have a soul, right? And the soul survives this life. But there's much more to it. And why we, we put the light after the tunnel? Why is, what is the tunnel, right? So it's like a passage. Death is a passage. But it's a necess there is, and the tunnel is just like how you channel from one, you said path, right? A path, hope. So there is always this, and it's a natural thing if you think about it. If you're going to move from one state from the other, like just like driving a car, if you go from Florida to uh, you cross the borders with uh, uh, Georgia, right? You see differences. You see that you have to adjust to that. You know, laws are different, etc. But are we sure? This is really that million dollar question because we are always puzzled sometimes we are very sure you know there is but we since they say like nobody came back to say how, how it is right but here in the spiritual center we're we have plenty of a lot of uh, spirits and a lot of people who came back to tell so let's in in heaven and hell there is a very good way to explain that Man, to whatever degree of the scale he belongs, from the savage state upwards, has an innate presentiment of a future life. He has an intuitive persuasion that death is not the end of existence, and that those who deceive that he regrets are not lost to him forever. This spontaneous belief in a future state is a vastly more general than the belief of annihilation. So believing that there is nothing, that everything just disappears, it is, this is it, you know, if I die when I'm 60, 70, 50, 40, 30, whatever, that is it. So that is a belief of annihilation, that there is nothing, that nothingness, right? So most of us have this innate, that means like it's in us already. Why is this something already inserted in our minds, in our souls, in everything we are? 
why is it innate? Why is it already in us? We don't pay attention, but we already know that. Because we've been through so many lives and so many deaths. Yeah. Exactly. This is like a good explanation that there is past lives. We've been through this before. We do have the forget the, the, the forgiveness, you know, the the sort of like erasing the past, so we have like a clean slate, we start fresh. But we have this idea implanted in our minds, not because somebody told us, it's because we experienced it. It's sometimes hard to to conceive, but we've been through that already. So if we believe in the afterlife, why most of us are afraid of dying? Right? Why? Why, do, why is that? What do you think, Vasco? I think it's because uh, the dark, we, we think that uh, when we die, it's uh, all dark. And, uh, Negative, right? Yeah. But we die every day. <laughs> and wake up in the morning. Anybody else? Uh, can explain why we have this fear, why we fear death. So I think there's uh, somebody very wise say, I think it was Benjamin Franklin, he says, there's only two things that is certain in life. Taxes, you gotta pay your taxes, and death. <laughs> and, but we're, we have fear from, from both, right? We're, we're, we. <laughs> uh, so, Let's, let's, let's see what Alan Kardec says on the Spirit's book. And, and actually we have uh, a very good um, question that is asked in a much better way, right? So Kardec asks the enlightened spirits, the superior spirits that they have, you know, very, not just reasonable answers for all of those very thoughtful questions, which all of us, if we had questions to ask the, the most wise person in earth, what, what, what those questions would be. So he had 1,019 questions in the Spirit's books. And this is question 730. Since death is to lead us to a better life, and since it delivers from the ills of our present existence, and is therefore to be rather desired than dreaded, why has man the ins instinctive horror of death which causes him to shrink from it? Very, way, very, very nice way to put, right? And he's already cleared all the reasons why there is the need for us to reincarnate and all. And this is the answer. We have said the man should seek to prolong his life in order to accomplish his task. To this end, God has given him the instinct of self-preservation. And this instinct sustains him under his trials. But for it, he would too often abandon himself to discouragement. The inner voice, and you know that the inner voice, it's there. Some people hear it. Some people think they're imagining things. But there is this little voice that talks to us. It is the voice of our consciousness. It is the voice of our guardian angel. It is the voice of uh, something that is helping us, alerting us to something. The inner voice which tells him to repute that, tells him also that he may yet do something more for his advancement. Every danger that threatens him is a warning that bids him to make a profitable use of the respite granted to him by God. But he, ungrateful, give thanks more often to his star than to his creator. And this is probably one of the main causes that we have seen a reason of suicides, homicides, the opioids taking over, uh, young people just abusing with the drugs and just dying at their 20s and people just losing hope um, 
I saw like, um, you know, it's tragic news, but a couple just jumped off their building because they could not afford health care. I thought for, at first it was a joke, but it was, a, it was, it was real. So this, if, if you break this, if you break this answer in three parts, we see how much wisdom there is here, how much explanation there is why people decide to self-destruct. This, this is actually in the part of the Spirit's book called the law of destruction. Because destruction is a natural way of renewal. Like a forest goes on fire every once in a while and like thousands we see like in California is always the forest is always in fire. There's always a fire in California, right? Sometimes in other places too, but 70,000 acres of, of forest just on fire, you know. But this is a natural cycle. It's destruction and renewing. That's the only way to renew. And, and uh, us, in us human beings, once, when we die, our body goes, we go to this destruction in order, you know, our body gets, you know, it's just this material body. And we go on. And this is a natural process. But there is a law that things have to happen in the time that they're supposed to happen. Not the way that we choose, like the unnecessary uh, destruction. So there is this self-preservation who, pardon me, the self-preservation is, is a natural instinct. Imagine when we were like back on the caves, we were like, you know, we have the, to run from the, those dinosaurs, not the good ones, the ones with the big teeth, the, I don't know what you call those, uh, X, the X, right? Just call them X, uh, the Rex, and, and so on, so on, so, but we're, we evolve, we're very, evolved human beings. We passed that already. So, so this, the, the very primitive self-preservation, it's long in the past. But there is a residue that stays with us that it is, it plays morally with us. And that's the evolution that we're still going through. Even though we have evolved materially, organically, and intellectually, morally, we're still sometimes back on the case. Because once we decide that we, uh, we cannot put up with this situation or, you know, uh, and just decide to self-destroy ourselves, it's because we're just giving room to our own pride. Pride, selfishness, vanity, this all has to do with our moral being. And we are this being made of all of this emotional, psychological, moral, spiritual values. And that makes what we are. That's our character. Sometimes we're so blind because we start, we start living life just according to what we want, what we need, that we lose the connection. We lose the connection to the Creator. Every danger that threatens him is a, way, a warning that bids him to make profitable use of the respite granted. The respite is the body, right? Granted to him by God. But he, he, all of us, right? Ungrateful, give thanks more often to his star than to his creator. So that means that we're, you know, we just connect to God when we need God. But once we are, we're, uh, we have to make certain decisions, we just decide to do on our own. So what happens is once we self-destruct, once we decide to take our lives, for instance, or hurt ourselves, or for some reason we die before the time we're supposed to, we are losing up in a period in which is part of our involvement here. There is a reason why we are here, and there is a reason why there is the laws of, na laws of nature that will play a role in our lives. So this is very important. But who are we really? And what is our purpose? And that is most of the times why we're lost and why we are, we lose hope. We lose, you know, life, people. It is normal for us to feel depressed, to, to feel sad, to feel disconnected. 
but it is not normal for us to let that feeling drive our lives and make it be more than we are because we are not meant to just pass by here. We're not meant just to um, have a mechanical life, go to work, you know, have family, friends, and, you know, pay your bills or don't pay your bills or just, there is more to life than that, right? So, but who are we really and what's, what is our purpose? So what's, why are we here, right? And what are we going to get from here? So again, on the uh, gospel according to spiritism, it is in the gospel according to spiritism, but who answers this question? It's Socrates through Plato. No need to say that Socrates and Plato, they're, when we talk about philosophy, they are the masters on philosophy. And this is what Socrates says man is. Man is an incarnated soul. Before his incarnation, he existed united to the primordial models, to the ideas of truth, goodness, and beauty. That's where we come from. Truth, goodness, and beauty. No matter how bad things are going, are happening to us right now, no matter if they're good right now, but like Livia says, more storms will come. We're, we come from all of this background, but then we're separated from it, right? Then separating from then, he incarnates what we're doing right now. And on remembering his past, he's more or less tormented by the desire to return. This is the dangerous part. Because there is a, why we hear then, right? If we're like, there is all this beauty, truth, and goodness, what the heck are we doing here? Don't we want to go back? It's the natural way. It so happens that we were not, even though we, we were exposed to our truth, goodness, and beauty, it doesn't mean that we, we evolved, we are in, our, in the best that we can be. We're, we have still room to appreciate, enjoy, and cooperate with that because truth, goodness, and beauty it's a state that needs to be preserved and expanded, and we need to be part of it. It's not just we can only be takers. We are part of the process. In the Spirit's book, Kardec complements that by saying, in order to cooperate into the material worlds, which Earth is one of these material worlds, this universe, as agents of a divine power, so we do have this divine power. We're here to contribute to the work of all of this beauty that's out there. So the spirits temporarily have a material body. But the work required in their corporeal lives, the spirits improve their intelligence, and by observing God's law, they acquire the merits which will lead them to eternal happiness. So, great. What happens after the spirit leaves the body? Where do we go and what do we do? Go to the tunnel. Ah, now you know the tunnel. Good, right? So if, everybody, if we live here tonight, we know that there is a tunnel, right? So what else? What, what, what happens? What, what do you guys think? That's a, that's a good point. Would that depend on the place and time of death? If the soul is separated from its body in a traumatic way, the soul would be trapped here. Good. That, 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 is, that, is, that is covered on the Spirit's book, and we will we'll cover that. What do I have next? It's like, a, um, like some points from about 20 questions that will probably cover that. So, anybody else want to share? What do you think? What happens? It depends on how you live the life here. So, there are many possibilities. It's really hard to know where exactly we're going to go. We all have, you know, we all know of the places we could end up in. But whether we're going to go there or not, it really depends on how we met our lives here, how much work we did, That's a right. lot of things that have to fall into place for we to know where we're going. 
you know, and we might have an assumption and we might be wrong at the end of the day. Yeah. Exactly. No, but I want to go to church for a class. <laughs> <laughs> We want to go to Jupiter, but probably we're going to go to whatever, the Neptune, right? It's like just gold and gas. So, so great. Um, what are the pointers? The pointers? Before we go to the pointers, let's see uh, just a quick summary. The soul before and after, right? After death, the soul becomes again a spirit. That is to say, it returns into the world of the spirits, which... He had quitted for a short time. He preserves, he never loses its individuality. This is one of the beauties. I think you mentioned one of the beauties on, on not just we believe that we are spirits living in the body and go back to spirit, it's having that conviction because it's not the nothingness. There is a continuance. But then we we are what we have been and what we're going to be. It's just that today I'm a little better than I was yesterday. Yesterday counting maybe 10 lifetimes ago. And I'm going to continue. But I'm always going to be Valdo. Maybe Valdo wasn't my name in the 17th century. But I was that character there that did some good, a lot of good, or a lot of bad. Perhaps a lot of bad because they're still, still here learning. So individuality is something very key. It still has a fluid peculiar to itself, which it draws from the atmosphere of its planet and which represents the appearance of its last incarnation. It is the perispirit. So not only that we have our individuality, but there are many worlds. We can go to different worlds. We can go to different places. It takes nothing from this life but the remembrance of the life, of that life, and the desire to go to a better world. Eternal life is the life of the spirit that is eternal. Simply put, eternal life is the life of the spirit. It's eternal. That is why we don't retrocess. We don't go back. We can, we can not get to perfection in a few reincarnation cycles. But if, 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 if somebody is now say that, you know, what happens to all of those people in jail that did terrible crimes and, and they're, you know, they're already going to some kind of penalty for whatever they did, but perhaps in the other past life they, they did even more serious crimes or they had made a lot of more mistakes and next time around they could still have some bad inclination to do some stuff, but better than they were right now. But people, we, we don't go back in, in our moral because we always learn, we always improving. The body is transitory and fleeting. When the body dies, the soul re-enters the eternal life. That's in questions 149 to 153. So here's the point. The spirit finds itself at once in company of those who he knew. This is what happened. You know, there is this temporary, in, they call it like a disturbance. When we just pass, when we just died, what happened to <coughs> us, our spirit, and, um, and the soul. The, so the spirit finds itself in a company of those who he knew and on earth, upon the earth, and who died before him and more or less promptly according to the degree of his affection for them and for theirs for him. On quitting the body, the spirit does not find itself at once in possession of its self-consciousness, something that you mentioned there too. It is for a time in a state of confusion which obscures all its perceptions. Not all spirits experience in the same degree and for the same light, length of time the confusion which follows the separation of the soul from the body, as this depends entirely on the degree of elevation. Knowledge of spiritism exercises a very considerable influence on that duration. So this is what happens when we are in the spiritual world. We are called the errant spirits, so we're like in a transition. During the intervals of its life, the spirit is errant. This state has no def definite duration. 
In it, the spirit is happy or sad according to the good or bad use of his previous life. So one of the things that we do, like in an accident, for instance, um, we, are, we, we are taking to a hospital. Uh, if we're uh, uh, in the first instances, pardon me, in the first instances that follow, it's not very different for us to be taken care by, by spiritual workers that take us in the place that we need assistance. Like if you hurt, you need to be treated. You need to, if you are like confused, you need to calm down, you need to come to your senses, you need to slowly uh, have a perception where we are and what we're doing there. Some of us that are so attached to the material world, to the matter more than to the spirit, if we have no conception of our spiritual world and what happens after death, it's very, this disturbance can last for a long time. So we don't necessarily get the assistance or we, we get all the help that we need right away. It might take a long time. A lot of spirits stick around. They don't really go because they're still attached so much to here that they're in a state of confusion that it can last for a long time. It can last, can last hours, weeks, months, years, even centuries sometimes. But the spiritual world is always working with all of us when we discarnate and they're there and I'm, I experienced that. So when my heart stopped and I was like in a death mode, I sensed and I felt the presence of the same, the, uh, as my body was being transported to the hospital in the ambulance, I, I was being transported, I was being helped by a spiritual team of people that took care of me right away. So when I was in that confused state, that dark tunnel, I was really, really disturbed and, and in panic, in desperation. So you cannot think straight. You, you're like, you're confused. So this is one of the things that we need to have. We have to trust in God before anything. Once we lose that connection with God, it's very hard for you to really place yourself. We always have to submit ourselves to a divine power that has power over our lives because the time that you only depend on yourself, your life, it's very easy, easy for us to be lost, confused for a long time. The moment that we make a connection to something bigger than what we are, that we ask for help, we ask for the help, God help me, God, God please help me. And, and, and it's like, you know, doors open, it's like the light comes through. That dark tunnel immediately became very lit and with a lot of help. So what is your concept of life, life and death? Is it perhaps time for an update? What did, what did Jesus say about that, learning from our Master Jesus? So, what is really our concept of life and death? Are there, that, that um, the purpose of life is a little more clear to us, that we are imperfect, but we are meant for perfection. We are meant to be enjoying all of the greatness that is there. The world that we live in, it's very minuscule, very little, tiny, 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 tiny. And there is so much for us to live. There is so much for us to do. We have so much power. We're like in a, in a cage right now because our spirit is so free and so powerful that as we go through life here, we're going to learn a lot of lessons, but we're not going to be able to do many things. Just surviving this world and, and trying to be a good person, it is the greatest task. Living with others, like that's why we all come from a family, right? Even the kids that are in the orphanage, they all had a family and they will go to a family. We are meant to relate to people and share experiences and help each other. And, and, and there is like um, a, an, an evangelical uh, belief in faith, and again, not to criticize that belief, um, 
my wife is, is Methodist. I go to the Methodist church with her and I take the best he can from it and we enjoy it. But they have a belief that um, once you die, you go to sleep and you just wake up on judgment day. So you just imagine those people who are died like 2,000 years ago, they're being sleeping for like 2,000 years and what if Jesus takes another you know, 5,000 years to, for the judgment day? So, and that's what Jesus said. It, it was very hard for Jesus to talk about reincarnation back then, but he was teaching us about resurrection, which is the same thing as reincarnation. It doesn't have all the caveats of, that we know right now about reincarnation because we're more evolved, we're more intellectual, we're more prepared for it. But he was talking in this passage in Luke 20, 27 to 39, if you want to check, he was talking to the Sadducees who, are, who were very materialistic uh, Jews and they were like, um, and they were like discrediting the resurrection. And, and, and they were saying like, you know, if Moses says that if um, you are in a family and your brother is married and have, has a kid, if your brother dies and, you know, you're supposed to take on his wife and his kid and take care of them and then and then what if he dies too? And then they were, he, seven times, right? So now they all in the resurrection. So whose wife belong to? You know, who's the wife? You know, seven brothers, they all died. And Jesus says, you know, you, it's, it's, there is nothing like you believe it is there. Once we get to the resurrection, everything is perfect. Everybody will think like angels. Nobody's given to marriage. Nobody's giving, no, we don't have the needs we have. Jesus was talking about the last level of, of our involvement with perfection. And he talks to Nicodemus in another passage that the spirit gives life to spirit. Flesh does not give life to flesh. We're, we need to be born again. So we have this gift of reincarnation. We have this gift of starting over. We have the justice you know, what is fair, what is just. So many people have so much and so many people don't have nothing or very little or what we have so much sickness. So the best thing for us to make this connection between life and death, it's, and how do, I, how do I apply all of this to me? So if we believe in our immortality, what we're going through right now it's just a very tiny, tiny chapter in everything that we are and everything that we still be. So there is a lot of hope. Another thing, if you're going to trials and tribulations, all of these storms, even if we have, and I'm going to put the worst case scenario, because we all have fears of everything, if we have the, the Armageddon tomorrow, say the world is coming to an end, as we've seen, the wars and atomic blast and everything. This is still, if, if it is to happen, it will happen, but that does not define who we are and where we're going to go and what, and what we're going to be. So I would like to close with this um, message from Joanna De Angelis in a book, uh, After the Storm, it was channeled by Divaldo Franco. And, and, and the message here is that there is only life and it pairs to what Allan Kardec says that you need to be born, to die, to be reborn again and constant, constantly progress. That is the law. So Joanna says the following, the spirit Joanna, right? Make no mistake, there is no death. Wherever man put his thought to, there is only life. The, cook, the caterpillar dies in its cocoon to free up the butterfly in its wonderful transformation. The, the plant dies, I'm, I'm sorry, the seed dies in order to form the plant. The semen dies in order to form the body and the body dies in order to free 
its spirit from the vehicle that he carried through the journey of purification. So this is the journey. Simply put, the caterpillar, once this is pretty much like us, we're going, the caterpillar, it is not different than butterfly. It's just a stage of life. It's, it's, it's part of the transformation. So the cocoon is like that tunnel, right? So the caterpillar, it's a very, compared to the butterfly, which is a very superior insect by traveling miles and miles away, it goes from hemisphere to hemisphere, and, and, and they fly and they just um, eat the, the, the nectar of the flowers. It has a much different life when the, the butterfly was in the life of the caterpillar, which was just crawling around, carrying this, this heavy mass and, and, and just being very limited. And this is what we're doing right now. We're very limited. And we're going to go through a, a tunnel through our sickness, through accidents, through um, natural causes, through old age. Like my father uh, had Alzheimer's and for seven years I saw him going through his cocoon like from having a little bit of memory to have nothing to have physical problems to be in the bed, to be in a wheelchair, from being in a wheelchair to the bed and to the bed through the cemetery. And we say goodbye to him and he lives on. So the cocoon can be all of this and that's death. The important thing is that we have that hope on our hearts of who we are, that whatever is happening now, it is so temporary. It's so, so little compared to everything that we can do. So if we're not there yet in life, if all of the frustrations we had carried on our shoulders until now, we have to do two things. Two things only. Let's know ourselves, know that we're better than that, and let's overcome that. But let's not forget to trust in God. The moment that we lose the connection, like Jesus mentioned here, for he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. So there is no death. Death is like a paralysis. The moment that we choose not to do anything, not to fight whatever it's coming our way, the moment that we're, we're going through the tunnel and you don't want to go to the end of the tunnel, you want to go back and you're stuck, you're not trusting in anyone but yourself and your fears. And fears just bring us back. We have to face it. We have to trust that there is a lot of help out there in both worlds. In the spiritual world, are working with us right now, every day. We have this guardian angel. We have a lot of folks in this universe that has so much love and it, it's keeping the balance. There's gonna be a lot of evil. There's gonna be a lot of, a lot of bad things happening. I, we're still far away to eliminate wars and, and all the addictions that we have. We're gonna see a, still a bunch of kids still dying because of the abuse of everything and, 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 and people making wrong choice every day. But the tendency is that love will overcome everything. We just need to, to apply that. Remember that there is always a big light after that tunnel. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.